Hey YouTube, who's your patriot here? I was talking about, uh, uh, you know, different SHTF scenarios in one of my previous recordings. Um, one of them, one of which was, uh, you know, total nuclear war, all out nuclear war, like global. Um, I had mentioned pretty much the only thing you could take was uh, potassium iodate. That is not entirely accurate. I said I would do some more research. Well, I've done it. And there are some prescription drugs that you can take, but they're prescription. Can't easily get your hands on them. There are, however, and this will appeal to all you uh, preparedness types out there, that there are some um, home remedies. So, I'm just going to start from the top um, with the most uh, prevalent radioactive isotope, which is iodine-131. It mimics iodine. The uh, potassium iodate tablets, K103s, that I showed you before, they are the ones that uh, protect your uh, thyroid. So that's the one I covered before. Strontium is the second most common radioactive isotope. It mimics calcium. So these are home remedies that are readily available that you may already have some of. Um, calcium carbonate or Tums helps block absorption of strontium and radium in the lower GI tract. Um, Gaviscon, which is aluminum hydroxide, also works for these two isotopes. So now I'm not a doctor. Um, I'm not even a paramedic. But I did serve in the military and I do have some knowledge of these things and the information that I'm reading you here uh, came from uh, medical sources. That's all I can really say. But they are accurate. Now I, I'll be up front here, I don't know dosage on these things. The, the only one I know dosage of is the uh, potassium iodate and that's because it's on the bottle. Um, any is better than none and uh, I'm pretty sure you don't want to take massive doses of these things um, for very long but you know it's it's not gonna hurt in the short term much <laughs> it's better than dying of radiation poisoning right anyway um, so these, these will, you know, Tums and Gaviscon will work to protect your lower GI tract. So, so far we've protected the thyroid and the lower GI. All right, CS-137 or cesium mimics potassium. Now, apple pectin, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but I looked it up and you can get a bottle of 14 hundred milligram uh, capsules on Amazon for 10 bucks. Apple pectin acts as what's called a chelating agent. What this means is it will bind to the cesium and escort it out of your body. So it's either, I don't know if that means it's going out your bladder or it's going out uh, the other route, but it, it will get, get it out of your body. Um, this is, it's, it, it's bottled like a, a, a vitamin. So, you know, this is something you can get 
Yeah, they might. I don't. I don't know for sure. They may even have it in the pharmacies, in the vitamin section. So I'm going to take a look and uh, find out, though. All right. Uranium mimics magnesium. The uh, believe it or not, baking soda will block the absorption of uranium in your kidneys. So, once again, I don't know a dosage, but it seems like it's going to work from what uh, these medical professionals tell me. Um, it was, believe it or not, they didn't want to talk about it. Um, I'll tell you this much. The oddly enough, the one that told me that that was upfront about it was a dentist. Um, medical doctors they they didn't even want to acknowledge that this was possible. Uh, one or two of them eventually did tell me that there were ways that didn't require a, uh, a prescription. But, you know how, I, I don't, that made me trust doctors even less. Anyway, and, and the, the only reason the dentist told me is because I've known him most of my life. So, anyway, there are a few other things you can do. Um, that are they're they're just good sense anytime. Um, the consumption of large amounts of clean water. Uh, melatonin will help. I know you, you all have probably heard of melatonin. Melatonin, it's a uh, natural sleep aid, but apparently it has some uh, antioxidant properties as well. Vitamin C and a good multivitamin will aid in the discharge of heavy, heavy metals and radioactive isotopes from your body as well. Now, I'm pretty sure that if it's an antioxidant, that it's going to help. So even foods that are high in antioxidants, such as like blueberries, um, those are going to help. So my gloom and doom from before about there's not much you can do about a global thermonuclear war, that's not quite so accurate. As long as you're not hit with a, uh, a blast, you're not in the blast zone, you may be okay if you follow these. I'm not saying this is the end all, but I, if, you do, if you follow these guidelines, I think you stand a much better chance in that, uh, in surviving that scenario. Um, something to think about, you know, obviously a limited nuclear strike, this is all useful as well. But one thing to think about, say we're not, our, our power grid's knocked out, whether it's an EMP strike or it's a natural occurrence from the sun or you know a computer virus or logic bomb or something whatever the case may be our, our power grids down now something that I haven't heard but one other person talk about and he is the reason I'm talking about this, and that's Dave Hodges of the Common Sense Show mentioned this, so I'm reiterating it. There are 124 nuclear power plants in this country. Um, they all require power from the electric grid to get water to the uh, fuel rods to cool them. If the power grid's out, um, how are we going to cool the fuel rods? Now, apparently, there's some of them that have a, uh, a mechanical 
back up to uh, cool the fuel rods, but to my understanding, those only work for, for whatever reason, they're only good for about 30 days after the power goes out. So basically, notwithstanding those, the power grid's out for any length of time, a week or two, um, or, well, it might take longer than that, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm not a nuclear physicist or I don't work at a nuclear power plant. But regardless, in a relatively short amount of time, we're going, we would have basically 124 Chernobyls in this country. Now, if you live near a nuclear power plant, that's something to think about. Luckily, I don't live near one. Uh, the closest one to me is in Paducah, Kentucky, which is about a three to four hour drive. Um, if you live within range of a nuclear power plant, which I would say, I would call it a 50 mile radius, um, you better have all the protective gear I talked about before and you better have all this stuff I just talked about now and you better have a plan to get the hell out of Dodge if one of those things melts down you should anyway doesn't have to be an EMP you know it's, anything can go wrong at any time you know the the former Boy Scouts motto that's a discussion for another time but the former Boy Scouts motto is always be prepared well this is something to prepare for um, what's the likelihood well uh, a global nuclear war it's not very likely a limited exchange that's more likely um, a grid down scenario way more likely and I talked about this before the the huge transformers that uh, we have in this country we have a, there's 200 of them and that's throughout all three power grids there's the east power grid the western power grid and the Texas power grid there's only a total of 200 of these huge transformers throughout that entire power, all three power grids total and if every country, we don't build them here, and we've only got a few in storage, but if every country builds them nonstop for an entire year, they can only build 20. So I've said this before, it would take 10 years to replace all of them. You know, I don't think those... Uh, nuclear power plants, even if they pull a, a, a rabbit out of their hat, some kind of magic deal to, to keep those power grids, power rods, fuel rods cool for a while, it ain't going to last 10 years. That I will guarantee. So at some point, if the power grid is completely wiped out, they're going to melt down. And we're going to have a whole bunch of Chernobyls. And that's bad. So, just food for thought. I'm approaching uh, 15 minutes on this, just over 14 minutes now. That's longer than I planned on. But uh, there it is. Uh, take it or leave it. I hope you've gotten some good information from this. The only one of these things I don't have right now is the apple pectin. And that will be remedied this week. I will get some of that. Whether I have to order it or I can get it from a pharmacy, one way or the other I'm getting some of it. So just keep that in mind. And as always, stay safe, keep your ear to the ground.